Why you sacrificing with the basic? Well, I kill you for <laughs> My erectile is not dysfunctional. <laughs> Let's use our president, for example. Are you over 10,000 kilometers away from South Africa? Conspiracy theorists. I can, I can open the door for you to join the Illuminati. <laughs> we make everyone. <laughs> Hey, how's it guys? Back at it again, Nippy Cost, episode 32. Yeah, my name is DJ Nipro. Welcome to another episode. Today's topic is more based on interesting facts. It's actually a page that I've been following uh, on, on, on social media. Uh, I don't know for how long, but I've been following it for a while now. It, it, it has got interesting facts and all these mind-boggling facts. Some of them just don't make sense at all. So today I was like, oh no, let's uh, let's let's uh, maybe try to look at some. I don't know how many I compiled. So today I was like, let's look at some. Uh, I don't know how many did I compile here. Yeah, I took a few. So <laughs> let's let's look at uh, the first one. Uh, it says interesting facts. Uh, yeah. It says. Hall of Fame boxer Sugar Ray Robinson once had a dream that he would kill his opponent in the ring. Afraid that this might materialize, he backed out of a fight. However, he was convinced by a priest and minister to go back in and fight. He ended up scoring a decisive knockout in the eighth round that resulted in his opponent Jimmy Doyle's death. Oh, shit. Okay. Wait a minute. So this guy had a premonition about punching this guy to death. <laughs> and the people are supposed to save lives here, like pastors and ministers, motivated this guy to go punch that guy to death. Yeah, this is a weird one. Shit. So who do we blame here? Because, I mean, the ministers and the pastors are supposed to be saving lives, guys. So, what do we, are we going to blame Sugar Ray? Uh, or Ndila Inchevenda will save Parana Zunguza, whereby the day was going to come anyway. Yeah, I know this is some other funny fact. Uh, okay, let's cross over to the next one. Uh, the world's biggest family. It's actually the man with 39 wives and 94 children. So now, this guy, uh, 39 wives. You know what? It's difficult to actually manage one wife and one child, if not two, three, four. 39 and 94 children. But well, uh, I guess he's got his own ways. Because remember, some of these uh, cultures or, or, or traditions, there is ways of doing things. You might find out that these people don't even stay together. This guy probably sees, that, sees these people um uh maybe once in a while like back in the day when you're growing up like they and venda they would have like magaraba where they wouldn't be staying with their family so they wouldn't be bothered about daily problems at the household unlike today where you're all in the one house whenever there's a problem here yeah, you have to be consulted you are trying to take a nap and somebody wakes you up imagine <laughs> let's say you've got one, two, three kids, whatever, and you, you really, really get annoyed when you're trying to take a nap and they're all coming towards you and going, wang, wang, they do you want this? So now imagine that nine times 94. <laughs> I would kill myself. Like, fuck, I'll just die. Wow, I'll never even make it to the 10th child. <laughs> how many would you do? How many, how many most kids would you give birth to? I mean, wife number 39, I wouldn't even make it to wife number 5. Fuck. <laughs> this guy has got balls of steel. I don't know where it comes from. I'll put up the caption right there. I mean, the picture right there. That's another weird fact. It's a fact. It's there standing in front of his kids. Uh, okay, another one. Yo, another one of kids. The record of the most babies born in one woman is 69. Hmm? How on earth, man? 69, how old would she be? I mean, I mean, she needs to be giving birth for 69 years. Wait, wait let's continue. Uh, Miss Vasilyeva, Vasilyeva from Russia. Oh, Vasilyeva. 
what is his name? Kalashnikov <laughs> from Russia gave birth to 16 pairs of twins. Oh, this makes sense. 16 pairs of twins. So this is what? 32 people, 32 kids, right? And then seven sets of triplets. This is what? Seven times three. 21 kids. 21 plus 32 is what? 50, 53, whatever. And four sets of quadruplets. Yo, she's so... <laughs> she's what? <laughs> she's fertile? No, 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 she's beyond fertile. There's no word for this. Uh, this is uh, the woman, but it doesn't say anything about the guy. Or oh, do you think oh, she's in sync with the previous guy? No, 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 no. One, most babies born to one woman. Most, okay, one woman. Oh, that other one was 39 wives. So it's different wives, one guy. This one is just one woman and, and, and with, with a lot of kids. So now the difference between that, that family and this one is that these are multiple women, one man. Now here, it's one woman. And we don't know how many men. They don't say. I doubt it's one guy. Because, <laughs> I mean, you know this this, this uh, DNA or... or, or or uh, what you call what you call this twin twin gene or quadru quadruplet gene or triplet gene it differs from person to person so her one is probably neutral it can gel with any but i doubt it's the same guy who gave her triplets and uh, the same guy gave her quadruplets and the same guy gave her a set of twins uh, or whatever number of it has to be different guys i'm assuming i could be wrong i don't know these people but this is a russian woman wow the most uh, this is the record for the most babies born to one woman. Mm. Mm. <laughs> hey, interesting fact indeed. Uh, okay, this one is a bit awkward. It says, according to National Geographic, uh, redheads might become extinct by the year 2060. Uh, so the, what they're basing this on the past, maybe they've seen a pattern whereby they are slowly but surely reducing in terms of uh, population count well and, and uh, is, is the theory true that uh, the color of your hair sometimes determine how smart you are like, 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 like some people say blonde women are not the smartest is the theory true i don't know is that another interesting fact i do not know <laughs> let's cross over to the next one Okay, this one says uh, a 26-year-old woman has aged 50 years in, meta, in a matter of days due to a strange aging illness caused from an allergy to seafood. Just stop eating seafood. Yeah? Or, or maybe she didn't know. She only found out later when it was too late. Because I know there's some people who have got this type of, uh, I don't know if it's an illness, but it's usually a congenital uh, disease, some sort of an illness. I don't know how to classify it between the two. Similar to, if you watched a movie, watched a movie called The Curious Case of Benjamin Buttons. The guy was born at an old age and then grew backwards. So he was born as a madal and then he, he grew all the way to be a child. And then we even here in South Africa we also had a case of another child who suffered the reverse of the curious case of Benjamin's illness, which I forgot the name exactly what they call it. Is is, is the, the reverse of it is something called progeria. This is where you age faster. We have got a person like that who recently died, I think a couple of years ago. Something called progeria. And we also once had a DJ who died a couple of, I think a decade ago, suffering from the same thing. And we still have other people. It's just, just not a lot in the world to have that. So, but this one, the case, this case is different because this is more like an allergy. If she didn't eat any seafood, ah, she was not going to have any problem of aging. You'll see the picture when I put it up there. Wow, this is quite an interesting fact. Okay, cool. Another next one is, did you know? This is a did you know fact now. Sounds like we are reading from bubblegum. Chepis. <laughs> Chepis bubblegum. When I say cheap is bubblegum, it reminds me of there was a time when somebody sent me to go buy uh, bubblegum in the garage. They said cheap is. Oh, so me, I went there and I said, hey, uh, guys, do you have cheap is? They said no. And I went back and I said, ah, they don't have cheap is. That person went back to the garage and said, stop lying. There's cheap is there. I'm like, no, they don't have cheap is. I went there. Can't they were referring to steamroll, bubblegum. Is this thing of us Referring to every bubble gum as Chappies just because Chappies is the most popular brand. Okay? Sounds like a did you know the one with the did you know at the back of the thing on the on the wrapper there. <laughs> There's a lot of those that we do with the branding, like like 
some some of the uh, like toothpaste <coughs> sorry a <laughs> toothpaste uh some people refer to all toothpaste as colgate like oh okay okay let's leave it so it says did you know if you are near a nuclear blast you will die with no pain because the explosion will kill you faster than your brain detects pain shit isn't that better isn't that a better way to die how would you want to die i, I, would, I would want to die in my fucking sleep i don't want to feel shit for shit imagine dying in an accident or from a gunshot you imagine feeling the entire pain. I think I'll, if I was to choose, I'd rather choose the one in my sleep or a nuclear bomb. My brain doesn't have to detect any no pain. I don't want any pain. No, 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 no. Hmm? And well, uh, I don't think you'll be, you'll even be given this one. <laughs> you, you never get what you want in life. Actually, by the way, you don't even get to choose where you're gonna be born. If we were to choose where we're gonna be born, ah, oh, a lot of people are gonna apply to be Gil, um, not Gil, Bill Gates' uh, children. Hey, the house was gonna be full. Eh? Me, me, me! I want to be born at Bill Gates' house. Why don't you wanna be born at Matangar? Why, why? Who do you want to be born at Matang? Hey, hey! <laughs> why don't you wanna be born at Tafor? I want to be born at Bill Gates' house. I don't wanna be poor. Hey, who's gonna be poor? Yeah, you never get what you want in life. You never choose. <laughs> so yeah, like it's the same way that if you wanna choose how you wanna die, you'll never really get to. Uh, you'll get a nuclear blast so that your brain doesn't detect any pain or die in your sleep. Well, those who died in that sleep, you can say they are lucky. Well, if you're dead, you're lucky. I don't know. We don't even know where you are. If you became a ghost or if, if you went to hell. <laughs> the next one is uh, grapefruits didn't exist before the 18th century. Grapefruit, I don't know why they call it grapefruit. Uh, okay, they say they were the result of crossing an orange and pomelo. Pomelo or pomelo. Yeah, grapefruit is the most ugliest tasting fruit of nectar in the world. It's an uh, inch when they call it bamboo. Say hey, that thing is terrible. Oh, no wonder why, why it is awkward. Yeah, didn't exist before the 18th century. So it's like almost around 200 years old. Mm, interesting fact indeed. This is this one is not even necessary. I, I wonder if there's anybody out there who likes grapefruit. Alright, another fact. The Avengers were a real team of Jewish assassins that tracked down and executed Nazi war criminals after World War II. Mm. So the term comes from real life uh uh, situation okay uh, mm. uh, maybe this Avengers now I suspect maybe it is sponsored by Jewish people because these ones were avenging them they were revenging what the Nazis were doing at the Holocaust I'm sure no 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 now I see yeah, the Jewish are behind the Avengers like let's collect all the superheroes and let let them be celebrated because they were avenging uh, fucking Adolf Hitler and his people's uh, 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 what you call uh, murdering spree. Yo, that is by far the most uh, the biggest case of of a Holocaust, or should I say, um, the biggest? No, the Holocaust is small. Can I say? Is it a whole, what do you, what do you call it? Uh, mass killing. That, that that is by far the biggest case of mass killing in the world, the Holocaust. So this guy will put all these Jewish people in a chamber and just gas them and kill them. Yeah, and you will do that for many many years. I think he did it in the 1930s, 40s, somewhere there. People didn't discover this shit until very very late, very very late. He was he was mostly going after Jewish people. Uh, he had a, he had like a qualnia, and it was similar to this thing of xenophobia and uh, tr tribalism, and just this like racism type of vibe. He, he hated Jewish people because apparently their nose was flat or something. I don't know. Or it was a chapa. Was it chapa? I don't know. But he had something uh, against the Jewish people. Some people have got theories about Hitler being a son of a Jew, but he's angry at his father. Do you know why? Because apparently he's a product of rape. The Jewish father raped his mother. The mother was probably what? Um, he's German. 
And then he discovered this thing and was just angry at all Jews. He wanted to kill all Jews and remain alone. Because he was a Jew, if his father was a Jew, makes him a fucking Jew, right? Okay. Oh, so the Avengers were real people. Okay, I like I like watching the Avengers, but the last one, yo, yo, it was too much. It was there was too much action. But my favorite character there is who? Who's my favorite character? Hulk. Yeah, Hulk is my favorite when he's not green. He's a cool guy when he's not green. <laughs> yeah, hey, when he becomes green. <laughs> uh, yo, everything is get my car. When it becomes green, things get destroyed. I remember there was a time when they came to shoot it here in Johannesburg. So every morning I would be going to the office. I, I see they've blocked the road there. I think they paid millions of, of rents to the municipality of Johannesburg to, to block downtown to shoot these scenes. Five days, I think, a week or so, shooting the Avengers. So it was the scene of Incredible Hulk jumping from New York or wherever, is it Europe or whatever, coming to Africa, to Joburg, to follow the other guy there, whoever that is fighting. I forgot exactly. I think it was a decade ago. So in my head, I'm thinking, ah, oh, hey, can't wait for the next one. Hey, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to book at the cinema. I'm going to be the first one to watch it because it was being shot right here in Johannesburg. Yeah, those five days, guys, they narrowed it down to, you know, the movie is so funny. That, that scene didn't even play for more than two minutes in the actual movie. I'm like, fuck, they came here, spent millions, and a week shooting this shit, this scene of Johannesburg of Hulk, and they didn't play for more than two minutes in the movie. I'm like, fuck, incredible Hulk, I want my money back. Avengers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but apparently that's how uh, most of these mo movies in Hollywood, that's how they, 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 they roll. Fuck it, if I'm making a movie, I wouldn't waste shit. I'll make sure that every single scene makes it into the movie. But what I've realized with Hollywood movies is that they 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 keep some of the scenes for future flashbacks. You know, there's always those moments of flashback and whatnot. Okay, let's go to the next fact. Uh, okay, this is similar to the one of aging. It says there is one person in the world with a syndrome, a syndrome called Syndrome X, which prevents normal aging. Their name is Brooke Greenback. She, she's uh, she's 20 and appears to be one year old. I'll show you the picture now. Yo, it's syndrome X. This one prevents you from normal aging. Hmm. Weird. Okay, the next one. It says, okay, this one I need glasses for. It says, in 1915, a woman arrived late at her sister's funeral. When she arrived, she demanded that her sister's coffin be raised so that she could see her one last time. Upon opening the coffin, her sister, A.C. Denbar, sat up and smiled. She went on to live another 47 years. Wait a minute. So, basically, the sister was not dead. But they were burying her. Oh, shit. She saved her life. Oh. She went on to live another person. Wow. Sometimes these facts, I don't know. Hey, I don't know how to validate this one, guys. Okay. The next one. Ah, this one is easy. It's Bob Marley, this one. It says in 1981, when Bob Marley was on his deathbed, his final words to his son, Ziggy Marley, were money can't buy life. Yes, money can't buy life. Can't. Uh, even if you're, you're, you're so rich, 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 you can still die in your sleep. I mean, you would, you would have thought that a guy like Steve Jobs would, would die from cancer with all that money in the world. So basically, yeah, he's right. Money can't buy you life. But contrary to popular belief, money can buy you love. But that's just a story for another day, especially in today's world with slay queens. No love without money. Where they are, they are charging you love all of half a million and then they divorce you after two months. You think you were not buying that love for two months and they, then they don't pay it back. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, we're buying this love. The next one is um, all bears from the polar bear to brown bear like to live alone. Mm, young polar bears 
like to play together, but adults are loners. Preferring to be left alone, except during mating season and when they are raising their cubs. Well, yeah, if you're a loner and it's mating season, how the fuck are you going to mate? You, you have to get rid of your loneliness. <laughs> you have to go ahead with another female or male bat and shag and then have kids. That's the only way. This one is not a fact. Even if a human being is alone and you feel like having a child, you're going to have to get someone to get laid with and give birth. Nah, this fact is not interesting. Skip! Okay, this one is, did you know, once, a, uh, once before, a mentally ill man shot himself in the head as a suicide attempt, but the bullet cured his disorder and he became a topper college student. Wow. So the, the, <laughs> the solution to his mental illness was a bullet. And he said, wow, the... the mm. Yeah, maybe we should try that with others and see if it works. I'm kidding. <laughs> Imagine going, going to a mental institution and be like, Hey guys, this solution works. Come, come. Q here, Q here. Let's play Russian roulette. <laughs> okay, that's a bad joke. Okay, the next one is... This one is called What the Fuck Fact. 4,866, number 4,866, 4, fact, what the fuck, fact. It says, Mr. T's wearing of gold chains and other jewelry was a result of customers losing the items or leaving them after a fight at the nightclub where he was a bouncer. He would stand out front wearing the items in case a customer who was kicked out from the club came back looking for them. Oh, no wonder why he was always wearing those gold chains and whatnot. So they were not, they were not all his. Because uh, I hear he was a bouncer at a club back in the 70s or 60s, somewhere there. Before he and landed roles in the in the A-Team and all those other movies he played. Like the one that he blew up on was Rocky, I think, with Sylvester Stallone. And then he kept on doing the A-Teams and then he went on to other movies. And he, I think he even had started having reality TV shows. Remember, Mr. T was a scary guy. Scary guy when you were young. You used to see B.A. there on, on the A-Team. Beating up people, just swearing at everyone, yeah, aggressive like a mother, <laughs> with cold chains and shit. If, if, even if you meet him in real life, you'll be like, oh, you'll just go out this way, like, hey, ABA, you can pass, chief. I don't want to be like a victim here, like the ones I see in the movies. <coughs> he had that thing about him, you know, which seemed like, hey, ABA, you can just punch you and you die, eh? So, no, so now those, those cold chains were, were taken from the gap. In fact, I think even if you were fighting in the nightclub, usually when pe people are fighting in the nightclub, they're drunk, right? They've got over-exaggerated sense of strength when you're drunk. But when you come back and you see that your gold chain is with BA at, at the door, the bouncer, who probably threw you away and it fell off last night. Are you really going to try to go back to BA and try to take back your chain? No fucking way. I'll let him keep it. Yeah? Or <laughs> you go and say, hey, BA, this, this, this is my chain. Hey, fool. Fool. <laughs> I didn't know it's yours. No, I know it's mine. Fool? And you're not, you're not going to tell him to, to stop calling you a fool. Because you are a fool. You were fighting the night before. Hmm? Hey, fool. Get him away, fool. <laughs> you don't fuck with BA. Okay. Um, the world's oldest tortoise. Uh, I think it's still alive. This footage was done. Uh, the current footage. This one that I have here. It was shot in 2019. There's a picture of it while it was whatever years old in 1886. It was not born in 1886. And then uh, there was another, there's another one of when it is whatever number of years in 2019. So let's just say this tortoise is above 140 years old. Shit. I think it's called Johnny something. I'll look up the name. And we'll actually try to find date of birth. But remember with this type of animals, I don't think anybody was capturing uh, like a uh, precise date of birth of a tortoise 150 years ago. I mean, it's not like we're going to know it's going to be alive in 2022. <laughs> think about it. If somebody comes now and tells me that they've got a, death, a birth certificate of this tortoise, I'll say, get, get a girl here. You're shooting me. You probably just 
now doing carbon dating on this thing to, to, to maintain the precision of its age and stop bullshitting. We have been having these arguments on the world's oldest person and whatnot. Back in the day, I doubt the, 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 the record storage of this, especially for animals, was that precise in terms of accuracy of the exact date of birth. Well, but if they do have, you'll never know. Okay. Uh, the next one. In 2007, a Swiss woman was unable to enter the U.S. because she had no fingerprints. Mm -hmm. She had a rare genetic disorder called dermatogilifia. Like it sounds like something of dermatological disorder. Something of skin that is not doing right. This is where a person is born without fingerprints. It is only known to occur in four extended families on Earth. Yo, this is rare. Wow. So this person can just go around stealing things and nobody will be able to catch them because they have got no fingerprints. You'll just assume that it's somebody wearing gloves. <laughs> you can't even prove it's this person. <laughs> they can do whatever the fuck they want. It reminds me of the other day I was on a TV show called Is it Hollow Man or something? This guy was invisible. He could just go around doing whatever the fuck. You wouldn't know who he is. He, he, he drank some concoction that makes him to be transparent. He just goes around. He just do whatever the fuck he wants. Just knocks on the door. You open. You don't see anybody. Can't just already gone in. It does what I remember. He was even losing women. They were like, taking bath and whatnot. Yeah, he was abusing his powers. So even this one can go around stealing and not won't be able to trace them. You'll just assume that it's somebody wearing uh, uh, what you call um, uh, gloves. In fact, uh, it says it happens in four extended families. So, I mean, if those like billions and billions of people who could be likely be committing that crime and this person would say, no, 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 it's not me. Do you have my fingerprints? No, I don't even have fingerprints. I wonder how else they could be able to trace this person. Well, unless if they leave their DNA behind, maybe that's another solution. Yeah, with today's technology, there's a lot of ways to, to, to use to maneuver to get a to get uh, an identity of a criminal. Well, it depends how effective you can use your technology. We've seen people who, have, who are failing with court cases, like I was talking about the justice system in the previous podcast, episode 31, a week ago, where the justice system is failing us, even with, with, with all this technology at our disposal on how to catch a thief. With cameras, everything, DNA testing, fingerprints, they still don't know who shot who. They go there, they argue for eight years. And they expect us to believe this this justice system. Okay, let's not derail. Let's go to another fact. It says, did you know in 2038, we'll have another Y2K style software issue with dates. S32-bit software can't represent time past Tuesday, the 19th of January, 2038. Times beyond that will be stored internally as a negative number, which these systems will interpret as friday the 13th december 1901 yeah 2038 is going to be a problem similar to y2k this is the part where in 1999 the computer was going to be confused when it turns um, 12 o'clock the year 2000 because it was not programmed to go beyond those zeros you had to manually put in those numbers i think we did this uh analysis with uh with uh berry in one of the nipikas i think it was last year where he was explaining how he was programming computers back then and he got rich from doing this to fix this problem so if you're watching this thing get ready for the year 2038 this is the part where you might also be making a lot of money through fixing these problems of computers by manually setting this new adjustment of the 32-bit software that's that's if people are still using that in the future because you will never know uh, things keep changing so at least uh now on this interesting fact or did you know fact uh, we are kind of like even preparing you for the future to see if you can have uh, some uh, good uh, business deals that might make you rich in the future imagine if somebody was to tell you in 1995 that go invest your money on facebook and google and youtube and tiktok in 20 years time or 30 years time you'll be a millionaire and just be a partner in those businesses and you listen to them how how rich you would have been today so look at this did you know as like some sort of a prediction tool in conjunction with the other ones that i've always told you in the past to say 
uh, I predict that in the ne in under the next 30 years, people will be able to download food. So look, look, look around those type of businesses in terms of evolution of technology. You'll be watching this thing there going like, yeah, but he did say. And then somebody will be like, why don't I do it? Like, fuck, I'm just a DJ. I'm telling you to you all geeks out there. <laughs> then you can just give me realities for advising you. Yeah? <laughs> you want me to start uh, designing a microwave that can download food? Yeah, I will start by trying to make it like a, some sort of a printer. So the nutrition or the nutrients that you find in food will be like some sort of an, a jet ink, what you call, um, ink, what you call, this ink cartridge, something like that. But it will just be generating food when you press a button of whatever that you're eating. Yes, think around something like that. I don't know. Hopefully, this, this, this is another prediction. It's the first time I say this one, I think it was, I saw it today when I was researching this. Quite interesting. Yeah, 2038. This is in how many years' time? It's just now, I think, in under, we're in 2022 now. It's in like 18 years' time, somewhere there. Yeah, it's not far. 18 years ago was like, uh, what, 2002. No, no, 2004, actually. Not that far. Okay, cool. Next fact. In 1995, Sonny Graham received a, a, trans, a transplanted heart from a suicide victim. He then committed suicide in the very same manner as the donor. Fuck. So is it possible that the stress levels of the guy who owned the heart before were sitting on his heart? He had, like instead of his brain would this be similar to that episode we had about reincarnation where it's either these memories are sitting in a body part or in a brain or in a soul that gets transferred so in this case some memories were sitting in the heart and maybe the heart pumped that memory back into the brain and this guy decided to think like the previous guy killed himself i don't know this is a fucked up theory fuck jesus how bad can it be uh, that heart actually after this one kills himself you don't have to donate it to another person hey this is a heart from hell mm -mm. Mm -mm. i might as well just die on my own i don't want this heart if i had a heart problem <laughs> another following fact 80 percent of the world fresh water reserves are stored in antarctica although there has been no rain there for almost two million years so how does this water go down there? It freezes over. And why is it fresh? Because it's frozen from the ocean. Also, it has been frozen since 2 million years ago. Hey, this one I need to research it. 80% of the world's fresh water is there. So the last rain that got frozen was 2 million years ago. And then it formed Antarctic. Oh, and then the North Pole. I don't know. So the water that is melting into the ocean now due to global warming is fresh. But now it's mixing with the oceanic water, which is salty, which you can't consume. Ah, uh, fuck. Okay. Let's just apply our brain on this one. I'm not sure what is the sense behind this. I'm assuming that saying the, the ice in Antarctica is frozen rain from 2 million years ago. I, this sounds like it. Ugh. This one, we need scientists now. My brain is leaking now. <laughs> Number, the next one. Hey, I think this is the last one. It's so funny. No one really knows who invented the fire hydrant as its patent was destroyed in a fire at the U.S. Patent Office in 1836. So you patent this thing. Only, uh, that, that protects fires from continuing to kill fire. And then you can't prove that you, you, you created it because the patenting was destroyed by fire how ironic <laughs> uh so we still don't have why don't you just repatent it all oh, but well you can't prove ah well this is one of those this one of those this is one of those where you you can't tell which one came first between the chicken and the egg but well there is an answer apparently to that there is there is there is uh what came first between the chicken and the egg the answer is it is the chicken. Do you know why? The egg that made the chicken was from a different breed of a bird. Think of a guinea fowl. 
giving birth to the new generation of uh, chicken that you eat now from rainbow chicken so kinifal was the first and then give birth i mean it gave it it it, 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 gave birth. it, it laid an egg that gave that that popped uh, the chi the white chicken like babhan i don't know what you call them or whatever type of chicken so the answer is the bird came first which is the chicken because the, the reason why we always argue is because what laid the egg if it was another chicken then how did it start without it being an egg first no 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 it was another species that gave birth to another species that's the answer of uh, what is the first thing that came between the chicken and the egg what came first hey this answer has been answered guys let's leave it uh, what other facts do we have oh we might do another episode of this ones but it's always nice to have a contributor whenever we're doing these nippy casts um thank you for watching my name is dj nipro catch you on the next episode of nippy cast episode 30 something all right thank you for watching guys why are you sacrificing with the basis of what i can't even my erectile is not dysfunctional let's use our president for example are you over 10,000 kilometers away from south africa conspiracy theorists i can i can open the door for you to join the illuminati good evening everyone <laughs>